This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Welcome to Race in Action Today. We're here to bring you the action from the Kleinberg Family Centers here in New Britain, Connecticut. In the event, the Kleinberg Concours de Elegance. And boy, I'll tell you, this show has just got it all. Classic cars, antiques, motorcycles, you name it. I think it's time you sat back and relax. We're about to see what the Kleinberg Show is all about and the people who make it happen. Yes, we have Mark Johnson with us with the Kleinberg Family Centers. And I'll tell you, Mark, you picked another beautiful day, and this event is really something special. Yeah, we're really uh, happy that the storms have cleared and, and uh, we were able to uh, have the show. You, we put so much work into it and lots of people are counting on it, spectators, cars, and uh, when the weather clears, it's, uh, we're really happy. Now, this is the second year of the Concours, right? It is, and, uh, and we're really pleased with the cars that are here. One of the things that we were able to do this year was tap into the uh, uh, Horseless Carriage Club of America is doing their uh, gas and brass tour in Massachusetts tomorrow. So we were able to tap into people who are coming across the country, uh, bringing their cars and ask them to come a day early and, and come here. So we have cars that are from uh, a couple from California. We have one from Wyoming. Uh, we've got cars from New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's nice to add those to the cars from this area. Yeah, I noticed. I saw a couple of cars from a long way away in a locomobile, too. Of course, that's a Connecticut car, you yeah. know. But, but it's from California, so yeah, I know. it's uh, kind of nice. Yeah, this uh, event is really getting to be really special. We, we're so thankful you hold it, and we're just having a great time here. I'm just like a kid in a candy store. I, I just don't know what to look at next. Yeah, it's, uh, it, people are pretty excited about what they see here. But I'll tell you that one of the one of the greatest things about this show is um, is that we've moved it to Father's Day weekend. This is the second year, and uh, it is so important um, that we look at fathers and uh, see their important role in families and with their children. And so we want to celebrate that. So that's why we um, asked uh, Wayne Carini from uh, Chasing Classic Cars if he and his dad Bob Carini would come and be Grand Marshals together and to uh, show a good father and son relationship and to encourage fathers everywhere. Absolutely, we're with you 100%. And, uh, you know, we, we interviewed a couple of people and the kids too at the same time, and uh, it is special. And I really didn't know the significance why you held this show this weekend, but now I, I could see the, you know, that's really a worthwhile venture. Yes, and that's, that's why we were really uh, praying that the, that the weather would clear and we'd be able to have it this weekend. So. Uh, so we're, we're very uh, blessed. Well, we want to personally thank you. This is just always an outstanding event, and uh, we're looking forward to coming back here next year and years to come because, believe me, you do an excellent job. Great. Thanks very much, and enjoy the show today. Thank you. Okay. You were great. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Yes, we have Parker and Gwen Ackley here with this absolutely beautiful Dodge Brothers uh, car here in uh, 1915? Yes, that's correct. It's five-passenger touring car. No, I bet you know a little bit about this car. What kind of motor does it have? Uh, it's got a four-cylinder in line. Uh, it's 212 cubic inch and develops all 24 horsepower, but it's wow. all torque. <laughs> wow. Now, how'd you acquire this car? Have you had it long? Yeah, I've had it for uh, about 12 years now. And uh, we used to uh, volunteer at Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, and uh, we went to an antique shop frequently. And the guy likes to keep an antique car in there for ambiance. So, um, you know, Gwen went in there uh, one weekend after a show to look for some furniture. He says, hey, Roger's got a bureau I want you to look at. <sighs> Next week, you know, we just finished the show. Next week we went there, and, um, well, didn't like the bureau, but I was looking at the car, just trying to decide, gee, what year is it? You know, Made one mistake, put my hands in it, you know, got in it, put my hands up on the wheel, and it felt right. Said to the owner, Rogers, is, uh, 
Roger, you know, just kidding. One says, "What do you want to sell it for?" He says, "I'm not sure. I do. I just got it three days ago." <laughs> well, Jeez. to cut a very long story short, three months later, he sold it to us. So that's my midlife crisis sports car. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, I don't see many of these cars. There's um, of the four cylinder cars. There's about 265 of them or so registered with the Dodge Brothers Club. Uh, but I know that's not all of them. There's another 1924, like uh, two blocks from my house. It's not part of the club. <laughs> I'll tell you, the history with the Dodge Brothers is really interesting. Oh, yeah. They had started out with uh, actually making bicycles. Uh, then they uh, made engines and transmission for uh, Ransom Oles. Uh, and then um, around 1908, or, no, I'm sorry, then um, about 1903, uh, Henry Ford contacted them. And they were making most of the running gear uh, for his, Ford's earlier cars before the Model T. Absolutely. Uh, and then they started making the Model T's, uh, the running gear. And about 1914, you know, Henry had said, okay, I want to make everything myself now. So the Dodge Brothers started their own nameplate. Well, the rest is history, right? Yes. <laughs> now tell me, Gwen, do you drive the car? Uh, only at the beach. I don't drive it in traffic. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, it's got to be quite a thrill, huh? Oh, it like is. This, yeah. <laughs> Every time you take it out, it's like we're in a parade. Everybody uh, smiles when they see the car and waves to us. You know, so, you know, we love all the, uh, you know, attention we get with it. Well, I'll tell you, the collector car world is alive and well. And uh, you need to be proud. The car is gorgeous. I like how you're keeping it. And I'm sure you're going to have some fun here today. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, we're we already here. have already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we were up here, what, 15 years ago for, you know, just you know, before we got the car. And uh, says, yeah, this is a great spot. So we're glad to be invited this year. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mark does a great job. And we love coming here. And uh, he just... Got another gorgeous day. Yep, he squeaked that one in. <laughs> Everyone's watching the weather. <laughs> well, I want to thank you both. You, uh, you know, you have an excellent. Uh, you got the Victrola playing, and uh, it's really dress period correct. We try to bring you back in time. Yeah. That's what we need. We need more of that. <laughs> thank okay, you. well, thank you very much. Thanks for the interview. Thank, thank you very much. Pleasure meeting you. Yes, we have John Linderman with us, who owns this absolutely gorgeous Stanley Steamer. And I'll tell you, this car is something special, and i gotta I got to believe you know a little bit about this car. Uh, Stanley Steamer is a car that uh, you've got to understand pretty thoroughly to drive it. I don't know how they ever sold these to the average person, but uh, I've, I have an engineering background, and uh, that's almost essential, I think, to drive these things. They're ahead of their time. <laughs> you know, they, no gas problem then, huh? Well, uh, I still need to have some kind of fuel to heat the, turn the water into steam to drive the engine. So uh, people ask me if I have wood or a coal, and no, the answer is I use gasoline to fuel this car. Some fellas use kerosene or diesel fuel, but uh, we still need some kind of fuel to turn the water into steam. So it's got like a burner. Got the burner. The burner is actually from here down. And the boiler is from here up. If I open this up, it's not too pretty, but uh, that's, that's the way it works. And then the engine is in the back of the car. Now tell me, did they sell many of these cars? They sold about uh, 10,600 over a period from 1980 or 1898 up to about 1924. That's about the last of the Stanleys. Well, I'll tell you, the, this car is really gorgeous. Did you restore it? Uh, Mechanically, I haven't done a lot. I'd like I bought it to drive it, and so uh, it's it's. I try to keep it looking pretty, but I haven't done a whole lot to the body other than the, all the mechanical stuff. It's a it is a a fairly heavy duty maintenance car. We say it has a, a five to one ratio, five in the garage and one on the road. <laughs> well, I'll tell you though, the, you know, in events like this, it's really good to see this car and. Uh, I know you're going to have some fun here today. Oh, I'm going to enjoy it very much. It's good have time. you come to this event before? I've been here a number of times before, yes, I have. Now, is this the only uh, antique car you have? No, actually, my wife has a uh, Nash Metropolitan, a 1957 Nash Metropolitan. But those are the only two really old cars that we have in the family. Well, I'll tell you, you need to be proud of this one. This car is gorgeous. I want to thank you for your interview and... In, uh, I'm sure you're going to do well here today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Thanks, John. Yes. You are excellent. Good.
Yes, we come across a familiar face, George Dragon here with his gorgeous 1907 Fiat. This car is just gorgeous. How did you ever find this car? Well, actually, we didn't find it. A friend of ours found it about uh, 35 years ago. Uh, it was in a barn uh, in South America of all places. And it took him about 25 years to, to acquire it. And after he died in 1991, I bought it. And you restored it eventually over time? Yes, we did about 10 years of research. You know, when you, in order to do a, co a correct restoration, you have the research has to be done. And we wanted to make sure that this was an actual Targa Florio racer. So we had a friend of ours that was the head of the Italian Car Club in Italy go to the Fiat archives and have these large books with every car that was ever built or ever raced. And he went line by line and found all the information about this car. And it, it took him quite some time to do it. But we did 10 years of research before we even turned the screw on it. I mean, how many of these exist? Well, there were five originally built. And as far as we know, this is the only one of this model that still exists. Wow. Uh, I'll tell you. The car is just stunning. I saw you drive in with it, and I couldn't believe. I mean, this car, the color and everything is just be beautiful. And every time I see you, you got a different car. How many cars you got? Well, we have quite a few, but we try to bring different cars to each show. And this one just happens to be because they feature brassier cars here at the Klingberg show. I wanted to bring something early and something that they've never seen before. Yeah, th this show seems to bring out the really different cars, you know, and the Connecticut cars are always special, too. Right. There's co collectors that only come to this show. This is the only show that they bring their early cars to. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, very, that's, that's what's great about it. We have been coming here for the last uh, 12, 14 years. Well, George, I have to commend you. This car is something special. I know you're going to do good with this car, but I got a feeling you're going to have more fun. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun to drive. <laughs> okay. Thanks to you. You are excellent. Thank you. Thanks a lot, George. You're always great. George Dragon's Fiat was just unbelievable. And look at the engine detail of this car. This car was really something special. I'll tell you, I've been to a lot of car shows, but boy, this car is really, really done right. And look at the chain drive. Isn't that something? Yes, we have Dennis Michaud with us, who's with this 1926 Model T pickup truck, pickup truck. This is a flatbed truck. Right. And I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car, Dennis. Uh, just a little bit. It's a 1926 closed cab Model T, and they call them TTs for ton Ts. Uh, we have a two-speed Ruxtel rear end in it. The motor's been all redone. Uh, the flatbed is an original. If you focus in on the back later on, you'll see that it has Ford truck actually stamped right in the bed. Uh, the beds are actually more rare than the closed cab itself. Uh, but it's a good running little truck. Uh, the motor's got less than five hours on it at this point. It's kind of like it went on its maiden voyage today to get here to Klingberg. Of course, we always challenge the, the Klingberg Hill with our Model Ts because if we can make the hill, we know we can go anywhere with it. You got that right. Now, tell me something. Like this truck, does it have a different motor than the car would have had? No, it's the same 20 horsepower uh, engine. Uh, we have changed the internals on it, obviously, to put aluminum pistons to lighten the stress on the crankshaft. And we're getting about 27, 28 horsepower out of it. And when you get eight horsepower against the original 20, that's quite a bit of an improvement. Uh, this truck is owned actually by Bob Spizzato of Farmington. And uh, he had to go to a family wedding, so he asked me to be the designated driver along with my colleague, Dave Harris, who was out looking around in the field. And uh, we're kind of proud of the car. It's kind of a collaborative effort to, to get it restored. And the big push gets on when the shows come around. We've, we're out 10, 12 hours a day. Just yeah, I'm sure. Cleaning and polishing. Oh, uh, still painting and touching up this morning as we speak to get here. So <laughs> wow. Well, I'll tell you, you need to be commended. This this truck is absolutely gorgeous, and uh, I just don't see them like this often. Let me tell you. 
they're not like Henry Ford would have built them, I can tell you that. It's way too shiny and way too straight and way too smooth. For I'm sure they didn't look like this when they were being used, too. No, how much effort can you put on a $250 vehicle without the bed, obviously? <laughs> Well, Dennis, we want to thank you uh, for having the interview, and uh, I'm sure you're going to do well here today, but I think you're going to have more fun. Oh, we have a lot of fun driving the T's. They're slow, and you get to see a lot of the scenery while you're going by. Of course, people behind us get a little nervous and want to pass, and but we just hold our course at 23 miles an hour, downhill with the wind, kind of as fast as we go with it. Well, thanks a lot, and good luck today. Thanks, Larry. Thanks a lot, Dennis. You're great. Yes, we have Mike DeAngelis with us who owns this absolutely gorgeous 1911 Packard. And I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of Packards in my day, but I've never seen one like this. And I bet you know a little bit about this car. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, Larry. Uh, 1911 Packard, it was a barn find in uh, actually New Year's Day uh, 2007 in Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh, it took about a month of haggling before we bought it. Uh, it basically was in excellent condition. Uh, but I wanted a restored car, so I sent it out to uh, Robinson Restorations in Schwenksville, Pennsylvania. Uh, of the 12 known 1911 Packards Model 30s, he's restored four of them. So he's the one that knew the car well, and as you can see, he did a fabulous job. Now, was this the original color scheme? Yes, yes. This is Packard blue with the black fenders. I'll tell you, this car is absolutely stunning. I have never seen one. Now, what kind of motor is in this car? Well, it's a four-cylinder. They call it a Model 30, but realistically, uh, they say it's anywhere between 60 and 70 horsepower, which made it very popular uh, in those days. This particular car was bought new by uh, Colonel uh, Rupert, who owned Rupert Brewery uh, at the time, and then a few years later, he bought the New York Yankees. Wow. What did a car like this cost? Uh, new, uh, this was probably around forty-seven fifty. Wow, that's a lot of money lot back of money then. In 1911, yes, yes, a lot of money in 1911. Well, I'll tell you, you need to be commended, uh, Mike. This car is gorgeous. I have never seen one like it, and uh, I got a feeling you're going to do very well here today, but I think you're going to have more fun doing it. Yes, yes, exactly. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You were excellent. All right, thanks a lot. And Don Carlson with this absolutely gorgeous 1934 Brewster. And I'll tell you, when I was growing up as a kid, Don, this was one of my favorite cars. You saw it around, you saw it around Berlin, right? You Ab saw it. Absolutely. It belonged to a gentleman by the name of Wolcott Brown, and he lived up the street from you. He lived on, uh, what's it, where the cannon was? I think it was Wildham Lane. Uh, 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 yeah. Wildham Lane. Lane. That's where he lived. He's long gone now, but great guy. I want to know one thing. I want to know how Butch got this car from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you. It, it was tough, but I, I loved Butch, and I knew what he'd do with it. And he's the only guy that should ever have this car. Well, I'll tell you, Butch, this car I've known for a lot of years, and it, it looks better than I've ever seen it. It does. Yeah. It does. Right. I've, know, I've known it for a long time, and I've known Don since I've been 12 years old, and he, his nephew, and I have been buddies since first grade, and so that's what happens when yep. things go nicely. I'm, I'm loving the car, and it's like it's almost like Don still owns it because I, <laughs> I'm around him all the time. When I see this car, I think of Don automatically. <laughs> yep, everybody does. You know, <laughs> I know a lot of people said they you yep. say, did you get? They tell him, did you get this from Don? Yeah, <laughs> that was yep. it. Now tell me. Did they make many of these cars? Uh, according to what Don has told me and what I've read, uh, in 34, 35, and 36, when they started making these at the Springfield uh, Rolls-Royce factory, they sold, Ford sold them 300 That's what I heard. chassis with the Ford flathead V8, and everything else is done by the Brewster Coach Company. And... Uh, they, made, at, they made convertibles, a few convertible sedans. They made a com couple of convertible coupes, and the rest were town cars. Like now, now, the roof comes off the front of yeah, this, right? Yeah. Yep. Is and it open for the driver? Yep. 
They also, Larry, they always also made one that was higher for people that wanted a higher one for the cab. It's about, it doesn't look as nice as this because this is just a low style, but they have a higher one for people that had the top hats on and all that stuff years ago, you know. I'll tell you, they were always pretty cars. Yeah. And uh, like, like I said, the minute I, I look at this car, Don, I just think of you. I, I they, swear to God, it's just like going back in time. They call it the heart shaped Ford. Yeah, with heart the shape. grill, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> And Bush, did you always want this kind of a car? I, by knowing Donnie since I've been 12 years old, uh, I bought this car in 1999. It took me five years to convince him to sell it to me, and I'm just loving it. I, I just fell in love with the car, and I, I'm so appreciative that Don did sell it to me, and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I'll have to commend you. The car looks great. Uh, and being, the, you know, with the Ford running gear and everything, it's kind of easier to take advantage of. I mean, it's easier to fix, you know. Correct, because I could find parts. I had a 41 Ford Coupe before this. I had to sell it to get to Brewster. And so I knew the engine. I can, and my buddy Donnie here taught me a lot about anti cars. Well, maybe if I get lucky enough, I could buy this car from you someday. It's possible. <laughs> Well, we want to thank. Uh, well, it's up to you now. It's up to you now. I have no control. I want to thank uh, you, Butch and Don. It's always a pleasure to see you, and uh, I'm sure you're going to have some fun here today. Yeah, this is our greatest uh, outing. Is at Klingberg. Thank you, Don. You're always, great. always. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> Yes, we have Judy Rathberg with us, who owns this absolutely gorgeous 1917 Buick. And boy, I'll tell you, I don't see any of these cars around too much. No, you really don't. Um, I understand this was uh, owned by a fire chief, and we have all the bells and whistles and the special light. that uh, it, It's uh, red and um, uh, clear. Oh, is that right? That's the a spotlight, yeah, on the other side. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the color, too. I mean, did a Buick actually come this color? I believe they did, yes. Uh, all your Model, a, uh, Model T's or whatever, I think those were all black, but this, this came in the red color. How'd you come about this car, Judy? Well, we have a 1911 Buick uh, buggy about, and we won first place at a show, and this car was parked next to us, and it won second, and we said we just had to have it. <laughs> oh, gee. Yeah, have you had it long? A um, couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed, uh, I mean, it, it looked, at first when I started walking by, I thought it was a Model T, but I said, uh-oh, this is not a Model T. No, no. And I don't see them. I really don't see these cars. Not too many Buicks, no. no. Where are you from? We're from Middlefield, Connecticut. Oh, okay, that's a nice area out there. You're out in the country, huh? Oh, yes. We have a house that was built in 1750. Oh. Which we're restoring, and we have all of our automobiles in a big barn. You have many cars? Yes, we do. We have four Buicks, um, two LaSalles, um, Mercedes. We do have a Ford, a Model A Ford convertible, and we have a Chevy. And um, that's just about it, I guess. What's your favorite car? Um, I think I like this one. Yeah, I, I do, too. I, I like the style of this car. It's got a real it's nice... drive and... Um, yeah. You know, electric start. The 11 is a little hard to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could get a little old after a while, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, you have a really gorgeous car here. You need to be commended, and uh, I want to thank you for having a word with us, and I think you're going to have some fun here today. Yes, okay. Thank you. Nice Very to meet you. Good. You are excellent. Thank you. As we show you some pictures of some of the motorcycles that were there, I mean, this show just had it all antique cars antique motorcycles race cars i mean you name it it was here and it, it was just one outstanding show as we come to the conclusion of our show i hope everybody has enjoyed it as much as we have producing it it, it has been just one outstanding day here at the uh, the Kleinberg uh, Family Centers, Concours, the Elegance, and we just love coming to this event. It, it's been just, I, I just can't explain to you how 
educational it is to, to talk to all these people and and, and get a chance to look at these cars and motorcycles up up front and personal. I want to thank our crew, uh, Bill Majak, uh, for all the great things he does, and uh, Dwayne Cody, and and also uh, today we were uh, pleased to have a intern with us, uh, Daniel Kahn, a student. Uh, he has uh, really been helping us out too, and he just does a great job. But all in all, it was one outstanding day here at Kleinberg. And also, I want to remind everybody that uh, there will be a follow-on show uh, as we'll get into more vehicles. And just tune in next week on Racing Action Today. This program is brought to you in part by Sal Cal Real Estate Connections. Thanks to the Race in Action Today crew, Dwayne Cody, Bill Majak, David Seidlinger, and Lisa Backus. And also we want to thank our home station, Nutmeg TV for all their support and all the great things they do. We want to thank PBF, Prior Brothers Fabricating, in Berlin, Connecticut, for all their support and all the great things they do back at their shop. And also, we want to thank Just Results Weight Loss Center in Bristol, Connecticut, for their support and all the wonderful things they do back at their facility.